children, are you ready for another fun-filled learning session? Teacher Joe is here once again telling you that there is power in reading, there is strength in learning. You're on Deppa TV, your key to being smart. Our lesson for today is all about dictionary and its parts. Before we start, let us review what we have learned about the different parts of a simple paragraph. I'm sure that you are ready. Are you excited? Let us read the paragraph and identify the topic sentence, the supporting sentences, and the concluding sentence. In school, children begin discovering what they will be in the future. The children are taught the basic life skills such as computing and reasoning. The school gives them a chance to become doctors, policemen, engineers, teachers, and whatever profession they would want to be. The school also guides them to discover their talents, skills, and interests in life. The school encourages children to always give their best and stand out in their own ways. As a second home, school is a stage that the different learners who will be the future leaders in our country go through. Can you tell which part of the paragraph is the topic sentence? Now, identify which are the supporting sentences. How about the concluding sentence? Can you find it in the paragraph? Let's now review your answers for our warm-up activity. If your answer for the topic sentence is sentence number one, then you're right. For the supporting sentences, the answers are sentences two to five. I know you got it right. Awesome! And for the concluding sentence, if your answer is the sixth or last sentence, then you are correct. You're doing great, kids! Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you for studying our lessons very hard. We can now move to our next lesson, shall we? This book is quite heavy. Do you know what book this is? I'm going to give you a clue. This book contains a lot of words and meanings. You can find its name in its word hunt puzzle. Did you see the word dictionary? Oh, you did! Amazing! This book that I'm holding is a dictionary. Today, children, we are going to learn the story of the dictionary. But before that, let us first learn the unfamiliar words that we will encounter as we go along. Are you ready, Wordmasters? For the first item, this is a six-letter word that tells us a story about the beginning of something. What is it? Number three needs 11 letters. The word we need means a person who knows a lot. Number six requires ten letters. It is a book that contains words and their meanings. Number eight contains nine letters. 
This word means a strong desire to know something. We're halfway there. Let's now go to the horizontal word puzzles. Number two is a word indicating a person who moves from one place to another. Number four, a word which means to look or find. Number five, this word means a person who waits calmly for however long a time is needed. And for our last item, we need seven letters. It is a feeling of excitement to do something. got the right answers? Let's check and put the correct words inside the boxes. Number one, it is a story about the beginning of something. The word we're looking for is legend. Number three, this word means a person who knows a lot. The answer is intelligent. Number six, it is a book that contains words and their meanings. Remember this book I showed you? It's dictionary. Number eight. It is a word which means a strong desire to know something. It is curiosity. Let's now answer the horizontal word puzzles. Number two. A person who moves from one place to another is a migrant. Number four, a word which means to look or find is search. The word that describes a person who waits calmly for however long a time is needed. It's patient. And finally, number seven, a feeling of excitement to do something. It is passion. Well done kids! You're really learning a lot! Now, I want you to remember all the words we learned because these words will be part of the story I'm about to tell you. The origin of the dictionary. So listen carefully! <coughs> The Legend of the Dictionary Written by Ruel B. Diaz A long time ago, people had no idea about words and their meanings. Dictionary, a migrant who loved traveling around the world, saw a small group of people talking with each other. He wondered what they were talking about. His curiosity started then. He began listening to the conversation of others, and day by day, new words were being added to his list. He was very patient searching for new words. He went to the different parts of the world, looking for the words that can be added to his word list. He continued searching for words. One day, he visited Merriam-Webster the most intelligent man in the world to ask for help. I have listed a lot of words, but how could this be easily used by people? Asked Dixon. The two great men arrived at the idea of listing words in the way the alphabet is sequenced. Dixon never stopped looking for words. He didn't notice that the number of words on his list kept on growing. 
people used to visit his house for one reason. All of them were asking the same question. Dixon, what is the meaning of this word? Days went by and Dixon had become known in the world as a man of words. In honor of his great work and passion for words, the book that contains thousands of words and meanings was named after him. It was called Dictionary. Were you able to understand our story for today? Good! Then here are some questions for you to answer. For question number one, describe the people a long time ago. According to the story we have read, people had no idea about words and their meanings a long time ago. Question number two. Who is the migrant in the legend? The migrant in the story is Dixon Nary. Next question. What made him curious about the meaning of words? His curiosity started when he saw a small group of people talking with each other and wondered what they were talking about. Whom did he ask for help? He asked Miriam Webster for help. Now, describe Miriam Webster. Miriam Webster was the most intelligent man in the world. How did Dixon arrange the words on his list after asking for help from Miriam Webster? The words were arranged in a way the alphabet is ordered so the people can use it easily. What is the contribution of Dixon to the world? Dixon had become known in the world as a man of words. And lastly, what can you say about Dixon? Is Dixon worthy of admiration? If you were to ask me, my question would be yes. He is worthy of admiration. Well, because of his passion to discover words and their meanings. He was patient enough to search for unfamiliar words that eventually helped people in understanding words better. Now that we know the origin of the dictionary, let us now study how to use it. First is the guide words which are found at the top of each page in the dictionary. With the first and last entry words on a page, these help us find words easily. Guide words can be placed together. It can also be placed on the left and right. A guide word on the left is the first entry word in a page, while the guide word on the right is the last entry word on a page. 
Another part of the dictionary is the entry words. These are words in a dictionary arranged in alphabetical order. These are written in bold. Each entry word contains different information, such as the pronunciation, parts of speech, and definition. Pronunciation is separated into syllables and tells you how to pronounce the entry word. And when you talk about the abbreviation that tells us what part of speech the defined word is, it is the part of speech. Meanwhile, definition explains the meaning of the entry word. If there is more than one meaning, the definition is divided by numbers. Also, an example sentence is often used to make the meaning clearer. So, what are the parts of the dictionary again? We have the guide words and the entry word. Remember these things, kids, because next time, I'll be asking you to have your own dictionary so you can check unfamiliar words that you may encounter as we study the English language. There you have it, kids. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. And before I go, let me leave you with a quote from Fran Lebowitz. Think before you speak, read before you think. Once again, this is Teacher Jo. See you again next time.